Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a quick video on the San Jose Sharks inking their star center Tomas Hurdle to a big extension as he has a modified no trade and no movement clause um, once his extension kicks in. Um, no movement clause for the first three, mm -hmm. then modified no trade, no movement clause 2025 26 through 2029. 2030. He's going to get paid 8.1375 each year. And I think from the principle of them keeping around Tomas Hurdle, who's obviously a star for their team, a San Jose Shark through and through, a absolutely <clears throat> purebred San Jose Shark player, and got drafted from there and has developed into a star for the team, keeping a great leader in the locker room like him is very smart. The only problem is San Jose has oh too many um, big contracts, and it's going to be very interesting to see how Doug Wilson, if he's the guy that continues to get tasked with it, um, is able to manage that, because you got Logan Couture, obviously, there to 2027, a very great San Jose Shark in his entire career as well, he gets paid eight million bucks, um, uh, and then you have Hurdle going up from five, six to five to above eight, and then you also obviously have on defense, the biggest issue contractual-wise, is Mark Edward Vlasic, who gets paid $7 million until 2026. So it's a great move in terms of keeping a great leader around, a great star, a purebred San Jose Shark. It's interesting to see how it's going to fit into the cap structure in the future, and if maybe on a rebound year offensively, they're able to maybe eating some of the salary so they save some money, get somebody to take the last... I think it would be three seasons of Brett Burner's contract at, say, if they get it down to $6 million. I mean, that's still not the easiest ask, but he has rebounded uh, offensively. He's been very good offensively this year and has had his moments again defensively. So maybe you can do that, and that would be huge for them. Uh, Eric Carlson's also signed at 11-5 through 2027, who's had a solid season in only 36 games this year. But his contract is even harder to move than Burns, even though he's younger. If you eat some of that, you're going to have to eat a lot of it to get it down to, I think, the salary of where people are going to want to bite. Where with, obviously, Burns, you might only have to eat $2 million bucks to get it down to 6 or a little bit more. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see where this team goes. Overall, though, I would give the signing a B just because I think it's a great signing from the premise of you're keeping around your purebred San Jose Shark, the guy you drafted that's been a star and developed into a star being there and is one of your key cogs on your team. So that's why it gets a good grade. The reason it's not into the A category, though, is your cap structure going forward. If you don't have the Noah Gregors, the John L Leonard's, the um, the Zingles even in the minors now that they picked up, so he's not going to be, but you got Weatherby, you got Pedersen they picked up, obviously Nick Merkley that they gave some chances to, um, you got Sh um, Shim Shimlevsky down there, oh, Zachary Gallant, who also eventually they'll probably give a chance to as well, and it'll be interesting to see what he can do. Ryan Merkley's going to be a good defenseman over time, I think he's only 21 years old. Uh, Santa Terry can also be good over time. Um, so I think they are going to be fine with some prospects. Thomas Bord Bord uh, Bordello, there we go. And then um, Cardwell is also going to be pretty good. Uh, Gil Martin's a pretty solid pick as well. They had a pretty solid, at least by the talent-wise at this point, 2021 draft. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how those kids develop over time. But in my opinion, opinion Cardwell, McHugh, Gil Martin, Jacobson, uh, those guys have skill it's now can they just develop that skill right and then Bordalo, uh he's going to be a good player as long as you don't screw him up so I think they're in a really good spot William Eklund, Ozzie Wellsplatt, uh, Tristan Robbins so I think this team's in a good spot prospect wise going forward but you're going to put a lot of pressure on those guys be, when they first come up because you're going to not be able to really fill out the roster and that's why Rudolph Balchers is playing on the second line and that's why Jonathan Dahlin when those two are more third line players are playing well he Dahlin first line Balchers second line so if you were able to have a little bit more cap you would have a little bit more value up in those lines but it is what it is they have good players Bobanov, Dahlin and Balchers aren't they have playoffs, but Bonoff, though, is the only guy that's really producing to a top two line level. So that's all That's all it is, where they 
are going to be interesting to see how these prospects step up that I mentioned and how quickly they step up because it's a great signing from the premise of keeping around a leader, but it's going to be interesting to see how it affects their cap going forward. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please continue to subscribe down below. Up above on the EGDs, widget to keep scrolling to 215 or more by the end of March. I really appreciate you guys' support this far. Enjoy the rest of the hockey season.